Right, this problem wants us to find all the parts of this hyperbola, all these parts over here, and then eventually graph it, all right? So if you're kind of wondering where this hyperbola came from, um, I actually did this problem in this video up here, where it was like a long string of numbers to start with, numbers and terms, and we turned it into this uh, hyperbola in standard form by doing some completing the square and other things. So if that's what you need, check out that video. Uh, but otherwise, what we need to start out first with is finding our center. The way we do that, just like we have circles, parabolas, and ellipses thus far in our conic section unit, is with our h and our k value. The h is with the x, the k is with the y. And the way I remember is you kind of use the opposite sign. So I'm going to use negative 3, positive 5 as the ordered pair for my center. All right. And as we do this, I'm just going to kind of graph it as I go. So uh, negative 3, positive 5 is about right here on my graph. Again, my graph's probably not going to be perfect. If you have graph paper, it'll probably look a lot better than mine, right? And then the A, B, and C values for this one, the A and B are pretty easy to find. It's just the square root of this first number under here. So this is going to be 2. The B is going to be the square root of this one, or 3, all right? And then our C value, uh, what we kind of use this, it looks almost, it is actually the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, and we're trying to find the C. So in this case, this number right here is my A squared. So I can just replace this with four, replace this one with nine for the B squared, and then equals C squared. So this is gonna be 13 equals C squared, or C equals the square root of 13. Now, sometimes if that can be simplified, like if it was the square root of 50, you can make that five square roots of two. Um, but in this case, we just have to leave it as the square root of 13 for our C. So that helps me um, here in a little bit with my foci, but first off, let's find our vertices. Since we already said that this is gonna open up in the y direction, right, up and down when the y's come first, we have to go up and down A units, in this case two, from our center to find our vertices. Those two points are gonna be the vertices of the, both branches of my hyperbola. All right, in this case, this is negative uh, three, Let's see, seven and negative three, three. Negative three, seven is one vertice, the other one, negative three, three. Okay, um, the foci are a little bit farther. In fact, it's gonna be the square root of 13 out from that spot. So real quick, the square root of 13, um, I'm not, I don't make my kids be super precise with this, just kind of get in between the correct numbers. For example, I know the square root of nine is three, the square root of 16 is four, so this is gonna be somewhere a little bit past three. All right, maybe I'll do these ones in red. So compared to my center, I have to go up a little bit past three, one, two, and a little bit past that. And then this way, one, two, and a little bit past three. So it'll be those red dots there. All right, those are the foci. And again, the way that we write this is that changed in our y direction, all right? So compared to my center, negative three, five, my foci are gonna be negative three, and then instead of just saying five, I actually have to add or subtract to get up to those red dots. So I'm gonna say plus or minus, and then the, what I plus or minus there is the square root of 13. All right, so this is like my x, y point of both of those foci. All right, a couple other things that I need here is I haven't done anything with the b yet, all right? So the b is gonna be out three dots, in, or three dots, three spots in each direction, units, I should say. So let's see, one, two, three gets me back to my y-axis over there. And then over here, one, two, three, just like that. Okay, what the B does is it helps me kind of create a box that's gonna be useful eventually uh, for my asymptotes, all right? So why don't I maybe just draw that box right now? And that's gonna be, I'll use a dotted line here. All right, the transverse axis is the axis that goes both through the vertices and the foci. All right, so it's gonna be this one, and we know that's the line x equals negative three in this case. The conjugate axis is the one that goes through your b's, All right? And this one is gonna be just the line uh, y equals five. All right, and you'll notice that those actually line up with, um, with parts of your center. X equals negative three is the X value of your center. Y equals five is the Y value of your center, okay? And then lastly, to find those asymptotes, we're gonna use that dotted box that I just made, all right? And we're gonna connect the corners with the centers and kind of keep going out, all right? Like that. And what these are, these asymptotes, um, it's gonna help us kind of contain the branches of our hyperbola. 
all right? But we have to come up with what the equation is for this. And one thing that might be helpful for you is to think point slope form like you learned um, probably back in algebra one, right? Where it's y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. You're always gonna write your y values first and you can just steal those right out of your standard form. So I'm gonna write y minus five, again, just kind of plucking that right out of the standard form equals, and then we're gonna have the slope and then eventually I'm gonna kind of pluck the x value parts out as well. So parentheses x minus, or x plus I should say, three from this one like this. So I need this M or the slope of my two lines right here. And this is where that box comes in handy because from your center to one of the corners of the box, you can figure out what the slope is. In this case, I'd have to go down two and over three or up two and over three. So I'm gonna say plus or minus since I could either go up or down, writing them both at the same time, uh, two units over three, rise over run, All right? And that's the equation of your asymptotes of the hyperbola. All right, the only other thing they don't have on here is the branches of the hyperbola themselves, the curve, if you will, okay? And to find that, or to graph it, we're gonna start at our vertices, both here and here. And again, we're gonna kind of go out and get close to our asymptotes in each direction. Oops, that one didn't work too well, but this one I'll try to do a little better there and here, okay? So again, your teacher might uh, require you to be a little bit more specific with that. Uh, for my students, as long as the asymptotes look good and it's kind of getting, it's approaching that, that's all I really care about. So anyway, guys, hopefully you found this video helpful. Um, if you did, please subscribe down below and like this video. Also, you might find this video helpful as you do more hyperbola problems. And we'll see you guys in the next one.